to the driver's line. I'm Greg. And I'm Jordan. And today, we've got a conversation for you. And our conversation comes to us from one of our TikTok followers. That's one right. One of our nearly 6,000. One of our nearly 6,000 TikTok followers slid into our DMs and said, guys, what car deserves to be resurrected? We thought that was a fantastic question, actually. Uh, so we each picked one car that we got to resurrect from the past. That's right. That's right. <laughs> one car that hit the chopping block years ago, but we thought it still deserved a place in the marketplace today. Yeah. So with that being said, shall I start? Go for it. All I'm right. Excited. Fair enough. So um, I am resurrecting from a brand uh, that has actually lost several brands within it. <laughs> so <laughs> Where? Uh, it's from the land of General Motors. <laughs> ah, of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the brand with too many brands. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, and very much like GM's past. Uh, this is yet another vehicle um, that, you know, it landed with some issues. Um, which, but which van did you choose? <laughs> wasn't a van. <laughs> <laughs> uh, landed with some issues, but of course, like traditional GM Is reputation. The van? It's not a van. <laughs> God. <laughs> the vans were never didn't land badly. They're always impeccable. No issues whatsoever. <laughs> The Dustbuster? <laughs> we'll forget about that one. Uh, it looked interesting. Uh, so, <laughs> no, this particular one, um, a, lot, a lot of GM cars, you know, they land with some issues, but as they always do, they fix them and then kill them. So, uh, this particular vehicle uh, was, I would say, pretty groundbreaking, not only for its brand, but for the market at the time. Um, and that is the Pontiac Fiero. Ooh. Yeah. Yes. All right, so to take you all on back, the Fiero was introduced in a time when fuel crisis was a thing, right? Big thing, big um, thing. So initially, it was proposed as kind of a performance car, but then as GM kind of looked at the market, uh, they said, you know what, let's switch this up and let's target fuel economy. Um, so this car's actually put together a mid-engine, two-door coupe, <laughs> was put forth to GM management for production as a fuel economy leader. An had, what, had, what, had, did it have the Iron Duke? Was that was the first engine? It was the Iron Duke, yeah, coming Ooh, in with whoa. the four cylinder. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? That Iron Duke also you found know, use in all the LLVs that deliver your mail. That's right. <laughs> but it's also in a sports car back in the 80s. But it was pretty, actually, I have to say, pretty fuel efficient. Oh, very 50 fuel miles efficient. per yeah. gallon on a highway. I mean, it's, okay. it's not a wonderful engine, but one no. thing it does do well is conserve fuel. So GM saw that and they're like, okay, well, this is a place for us to kind of compete with the Japanese. We can make a, a fuel efficient two-door, uh, looks sporty, you know, but uh, it, we can kind of skirt the sidelines here and, and make it efficient. So we got 50 mile per gallon, pretty slow, two-door coupe. <laughs> um, you know, eventually they threw in a V6. Yes. Okay, so we upped the power by 40 horsepower. Still not necessarily fast by today's standards. Um, but as time went on, um, we realized that there were some issues. Uh, with the <laughs> <laughs> Namely, it likes to catch fire. You know. Uh, um, they, they called it Fiero for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, the, the name Fiero sounds like fire, yeah, right? Yes, it does. Uh, yes, very very much so. And so, Actually, I mean, it's meaning, this but... is just like... <laughs> So yeah, it, the name is supposed to represent bravery and, and triumphant victory, but um, maybe not so much. Yeah. Uh, we found out that you know if you didn't quite maintain the oil levels, uh, there apparently were some rod issues inside the engine, which would cause it to leak some oil onto the engine parts and catch fire. Yeah. That was caught early though. Um, within its first model year, they were starting introducing fixes, but you know unfortunately. There was so much pent up demand for it. Lots of people bought them actually. In well, I mean, it was, a, it was a fantastic car. Yeah. And it looked like nothing else really yeah. out there at the time. You know, it, you know, it was kind of an analog to the MR2 uh, mm -hmm. from Toyota, but you know, from from a GM standpoint, it looked like nothing else in their lineup. Absolutely. So, uh, of course, they they did make a fix for it um, and introduced even more powerful engines towards the end. Uh, and came out with a different body style for its upper level GT trim, mm -hmm. which looked fantastic. Oh, I love I mean, it. It looked I like a little GTs. Ferrari. Oh, it did look like a little Ferrari. And, you know, they had like the, you know, I mean, Pontiac was, their thing was the cladding. And maybe that was partially some of their undoing too, but the Fiera looks so good with the cladding. Yeah, I know. Right? It just, the lower ground effects and, you know, the uh, like checkered tail lights. Yeah, oh, I just, I love those. I love those. Especially the later models, yeah. the 89s and 90s, 91. So, um, you know, there was talk, uh, well, actually, let me back up. 
you talked about cladding. Mm -hmm. The Fiero was the first one to introduce those plastic body panels on a more affordable vehicle. Yeah. So, you know, we had the Corvettes with the fiberglass bodies. Right. Now we're introducing a slightly different material. There was a brand that harped onto that, Saturn. Right, so mm -hmm. it rolled this out way before Saturn was even a thought, uh, and we still have vehicles now today using composite body materials. So, mm -hmm. you know, Fuhrer had some interesting technology ahead of time. Towards the end, they were talking about for its second generation, introducing a 3.8 liter turbocharged V6. Right, uh, some dual overhead cam motors that would be introduced in some later models, but it actually even made the carbon driver best. 10 best list. It's, it's I not mean, surprising. You know, I mean, it, so, was, it, was, it was groundbreaking, and that's yeah. what Car and Driver loves, you know? Exactly. So, I mean, they, you know, when, when they put it on their list, they weren't concerned with the fact that, you know, the rod would go through the blocking, <laughs> spew out oil, and catch itself on fire. That's not an issue. But the fact that it was, you know, neat, a tidy package, interesting, and fun to drive was really the, the, the impetus behind it. Yeah. So, I mean, I think obviously we can't necessarily resurrect. It and the Pontiac brand together. Um, but I think with the death of the Camaro, sadly, um, Chevy has a place where they could introduce a affordable mid-engine, uh, relatively fuel efficient, mm -hmm. right? Uh, engaging sports car. Uh, that's something that slots below the mid-engine Corvette, right? So we yeah, have- Absolutely. We have, you know, bookends to the GM performance portfolio here. I mean, it doesn't really fit in necessarily anywhere else. Call it the Manta Ray. There you go. Look, we've even got a name we've for it. We've got a name it, for right? you there. But it's really sad to see such an awesome idea die so quickly. So um, what, what would you want to see for it in an engine? Well, um, I think that it would be a couple of variants. Um, I think you got to stick with a turbo four because yep. everything has a turbo four. Base nowadays. model, yeah. Base model, definitely turbo four. But uh, what would you put in the hypo version? I would love to see a twin turbo V6 yes. in that sucker. <laughs> Put the LF4, LF4 out of the uh, CT4V Blackwing. Absolutely. Link. Needs to go right in there, right behind the driver. Yeah, I that mean. That would be like probably too close to stepping on the Corvette's toes. <laughs> we think so, maybe. <laughs> uh, I think we've got a lot more to Corvette coming our way. <laughs> oh, but. We absolutely do, but that would be very close to stepping on the base thing. Yeah, that's okay. That's uh, all right. I'm all up for a little competition yeah. here within and a maybe, GM stable. And maybe, just maybe could have a manual transmission. Ooh, that would be amazing. Which would make it significantly slower than the Stingray. Yeah. And that's, still clutch. Uh, yeah. But, but a lot more fun to drive. More engaging, yes, absolutely. absolutely. And we know that GM can engineer a mid-engine platform. I mean, this, the C8's fantastic. Fantastic. So, so like a spaceship. Just shrink yeah. it down and give us a manta ray. I love that. Let's go with it. Make right? it. Make it so, GM. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Have some fun. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, good choice. All right. Mine's a little bit more trending toward the recent side of things. Okay, all right. But it is a model that died out um, a little bit over 10 years ago, okay. uh, roughly. All right. Um, Cadillac. Okay. <laughs> Wagon. Oh. And of course, yes. I'm talking about the CTS-V yes. Wagon. That would be amazing. Amazing. Very it was... It was something that did not sell well at all when it was new, but kind of like a lot of those movies that nobody went and saw the first time, but now are just like cult classics. Yes. That's exactly what the CTSV wagon is now. That's a great description. Get something with a manual transmission yeah. or an automatic, kind of a quirky wagon body style, mm -hmm. but it gives you that little bit of extra utility and something that is just an absolute boulevard bruiser. Yeah. I think it fits into Cadillac's ethos. I think it's something that they need right now yeah. and they could do that with a modification to the CT5V Blackwing. I think that's a great pick, especially considering BMW is bringing its M5 yes, Touring here. Exactly, that's one of the things I thought about. We're getting the yeah. M5 Touring back. Yeah. The E63 wagon hasn't gone away. Right. And the RS6, all, the RS6 Avant is still here. Yeah. And so Cadillac needs something that competes with these and every single auto pundit that has driven the CT5V Blackwing absolutely adores it. So I think this would compete so strongly against those Germans. Yeah, I, I agree. With a dose of American flavor. I mean, you don't need to do anything besides change that body. I mean, I, I think um, when you look at Cadillac's current lineup with its future, that would be a really nice bridge too. When you, you know, it's performance for when, you, when you're looking at the CT5 um, mixed with some styling elements. I mean, look at the future that 
Cadillac is embracing, mm -hmm. right? Um, it has all those wagony shapes already. Exactly, and it so this would so just well. yeah, it would blend right into you know what you've got with like the, the lyric, the Celestique. They kind of yeah. look wagony. They do. Yeah, that's a great call out. I would love for a Cadillac wagon to come <laughs> yes. back. That would be fantastic. It would be so much fun. Um, you know, I, again, they didn't sell particularly well, and I wouldn't yeah. expect strong sales here because it is sure. still just a unique niche market. I mean, you're not seeing tons of RS6s driving around. You're not right. seeing tons of E63 wagons, or the M5 Touring is probably going to sell probably in the hundreds, maybe yeah. thousands a year. And that's what you would really expect from the Cadillac, but it would be a really unique halo car since we know they're not going to build a CN mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. But this would be something a little bit easier for them to go ahead and build. And they could, you know, then put it through the rest of the CT5 lineup too. So that way, if you didn't want to spend 110,000 bucks on your CT5V Blackwing yeah. wagon, Mm -hmm. You can still get a CT5V wagon. Yeah, I, I think it would also really help with uh, holding on to some Cadillac brand cachet. And when you look at you know used CT-V wagons, they're holding their value way better than the sedans. Big time, yeah. Okay. I mean, they're so, so much, so much more desirable yeah. at this point. And I think that's why you would actually see some people spending that money and going for these in a wagon format now. Absolutely. I mean, you got utility. People crave utility nowadays. Not necessarily that these people are driving to Home Depot and putting bags of concrete in their seat. Probably not. Blackwing. But <laughs> you would be able to know. take all your kids' hockey gear yeah, and throw it in the go. back as you go to hockey practice. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, carry the big wine hall, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. And, you know, it would, you know, kind of, you know, as it blends into the future of Cadillac, it would also be the most fitting send off for their internal combustion. Yeah, absolutely. I'd definitely bring it back, GM. Yeah. Come on now. What a swan song would that be? That would be awesome. Yes. Absolutely. Well, you hope. I hope you enjoyed our car resurrections. Yes, let us know what cars you would like to see resurrected in the comments. We'll be interested to see. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us on The Driver's Line. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss a thing.